This is my plan to get rich shorting oil. You might be thinking, Antonio, you're getting completely crazy. You want to short oil? Have you not seen the price of the gas stations? They just keep going higher and higher every single week. And pretty much oil has just been on a tear this whole year. Why would you want to go shorting to the strongest sector? Either way, hit the like, subscribe down below, and let me know in the comments below what you think about my plan on shorting oil. Do you think it's a great plan or do you think I seem like a fool? But to me, I think I'm a genius. And let me explain you why. So first, we're going to be starting off on why has oil even gone up to begin with. There's a lot of different factors. One of the main factors was that the rigs, their mine oil, which nobody's been talking about, have been just shut down. A lot of those rigs that were mining oil in 2019, during 2020, during the COVID, actually got shut down they just weren't they're not mining as much oil and one of the reasons was that demand wasn't there all, all companies said well you know we're mining more oil but we're not making more profit what's the point not a lot of people are driving nowadays then 2020 goes by a lot, a lot you know the lockdown and everything 2021 comes around still somewhat of a lockdown people are starting to drive a little more but all companies are like well you know what i'm gonna just raise prices slightly rather than open up more rig so then there's less supply of oil and demand slowly grows and grows and grows and grows until we get to 2022 where finally the demand is back to pre-pandemic level and now in com combination of the russia exports being zero it makes the price of oil gone up and just all companies have not opened those rigs back up. And a lot of that also comes with pressure from companies like BlackRock and Vanguard. And it's not conspiracy theory, it's actual facts putting uh, big companies like ExxonMobil or Chevron in distress, telling them, hey, you guys gotta lower your carbon footprint. You guys are all these huge rig companies are hurting the environment. If you guys wanna be keep getting our money, you gotta lower it down. So they had to close those rigs and they do not plan to open that back up. At least as of right now, that might be changing. Now we only import about 8% of oil from Russia. So you'd be thinking that, okay, prices should only go up about 8%, but it's not the truth. A lot of that becomes also gas, Companies, they're, they said, you know what? You guys have been bullying us for way too long. You guys keep talking about these bullshit ass EV companies. It's our time to shine. We're gonna take this news and run with it and we're actually gonna be pumping our prices as well. They keep that in mind as well. These companies have a bottom line and they've seen probably gains that have not seen since 2007, 2006. Well, back when oil was also peaking and it's actually the all-time high levels of oil prices it was in 2007, 2008, before we saw a massive, massive crash. Now, one thing that you might see from studying the stock market chart is a lot of times oil crashes alongside with the stock market. Very short distance from when the stock market crash, oil tends to crash. I mean, you might remember in 2021 when freaking the price of oil was in the negatives. So like, can you imagine that? Well, you could buy a gallon and they would have paid you to take that gallon. And now that same gallon is in the high hundreds. Like, they're just completely insane. It's also, I would like to point out that oil has a huge, huge seasonality. Oil tends to peak in between February to April and then becomes kind of stagnant to lowers a little bit between May to July, then peaks again in August, September, October, and then usually from October back to January has a massive crash all the way to February. That's just one of the other reasons why I think oil is getting close to that topping level. I'm not saying it's going to be happening today. I do think I do am going to be taking a small position, but I'm going to be adding this position later in the summer because the summer months are the most uh highest prices of the oil because the more people are driving they're not stuck inside because it's too cold if people are cold they don't want to go outside but during the summer they're like hey let's hit the beach let's go out let's go have a uh, couple beers at the bar let's just have some fun let's go explore and also during the summer months there's a lot more vacations you gotta keep in mind with the price of oil you also get to keep take in mind the jets that are people going from vacation um everywhere you also keep in mind the cruise ships they do use a lot of oil and while we're on that travel topic another reason why oil is good enough is because the travel has picked up if you've gone to any of those airplanes lately i travel a lot and let me tell you guys the prices of airplanes are not only just gone higher but they're packed i used to be able to get these first class tickets for four or five thousand dollars no big deal i'm chilling i'm like all right i'm by myself now they're like 10 to twenty thousand sometimes and i go and it's the whole first class is packed i used to never see that so the more airplanes in the air the more demand of oil going higher we expect that to cooling off if you do expect a recession which i do think a recession is going to be coming we're not officially in a recession people are not going to have money to travel as much people are not going to have money to go to do all those fun activities as much they're not going to be ordering on amazon as much so there's not going to be as many ships that are coming from china and india and all these other places which are going to 
caused the demand of oil to go down and this is another reason why I think oil is peaking out. To me this seems a very similar situation to what we saw in lumber in 2021. We saw the price of lumber completely go insane. It went to the moon, it was about $180 at its peak and now it's actually back to around $500. We saw everybody saying that lumber was going to be in high demand, inflation was going to be crazy on lumber, lumber was just hard to come by and nobody was willing to short lumber. And what did shortly after a year happen, lumber were back to pretty much its average prices which was around the $500 mark. You had a spike that was caused by a different supply chain issues, but eventually corrected back to its mean. I do think that it is a different situation. The lumber to the oil, there's all different factors involving both of them. But I do think it's important to remember that a lot of times we think things are just going higher and they're never going to come back down. A lot of times that's not the case. We see them pretty much in every bubble and oil can have its own bubble as well. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that I think the oil price has peaked today. I think it's in the process of speaking. I think we'll probably see it peak around this summer. Now, we see also the European nation, which really relies on oil from Russia, has come out to have a six to eight month plan of completely not using any Russian oil, which means they'll be getting their oil from other sources. Now, what I think we'll be seeing here is a lot of oil changing hands. For example, a lot of Russian oil that was going to EU and the US, which now have sanctions on them, might be still going to a lot to India and China. A lot of the Saudi oil that was going to China and India won't be going there anymore because they're getting theirs from Russia and now it's still going to the EU and the US, which might be eventually just equalize what's going on in this whole situation around. Not to even mention that potentially this, during the summer, if things don't escalate, you could always have a peace treaty and things just go back to normal to how they were. And we're in this whole crazy thing about, you know, oil going nonstop higher and higher could just all come back down. Now, these are all things that I want to rely on because all those things are out of my own hands. What I do want to rely on, on my personal belief on oil being overextended and also technical charts. So that's how we're going to get into the charts as well. The first ticker that I do plan to short is ticker symbol XOM, which is very near breaking its all time highs levels. First thing I like to point out, whenever XOM gets near these $100 levels, it tends to crash pretty hard. We saw back in 2008 and then we saw back in 2014. The reason why XOM, Exxon Mobil, doesn't have just a steady growth like many other companies because a lot of their growth is based on the price of the oil and whatever is going on around the oil, which usually means whenever XOM reaches a certain price, the price of the crude oil or whatever barrel oil they're getting for is getting a little too much out of hand and a lot of times it tends to drop back. Next up, let's talk about the US oil. The US oil, which is actually in a really dangerous area. It's getting near that 2008 levels. And if we go back and see that 2008 chart, I mean, look at the oil. It went completely parabolic up and then completely crushed down. I definitely do think it has potential to get back to those levels, but trust me, I'll be shorting very near those levels. I think there's a potential here for causing a double top peak from 2008 to 2022 and probably be coming down, crashing back down as well. CVX is another ticker that I do plan to short, but it has broken out its all-time high levels and it's been on a pretty much a meteoric push higher. I definitely do think it's come back down to the 130 levels and I'll be there catching this fall from 177, it's just trading out right now, all the way to 133. So those are my top three tickers on my hit list of stocks that I do plan to short with the whole oil. I do think that the peak will be later this year, most likely in the end of summer. Uh, and I do think we do have a short term peak near around where we are right now. My last point that I want to talk about is the financial cycle. The best time to buy oil and energy sector just in general is near the top of a bull market, which I do think we're very near, if not at the very top of a bull market run. It's been running since the 2008 crash. Now, I think that this oil has had its run. It's pretty much very close to being done. And I think it's going to be on the backside of it. And once we do finally enter a recession and a really long bear market, I do think oil is going to be one of those things that really, really gets hurt. I think that we're very near the top and a lot of things that people have been investing in oil and long-term investor uh, big whales are going to start transitioning that oil into different sectors. But now let me know in the comments down below, do you think I'm crazy for trying to short oil one of the strongest sectors this year? Do you think I'll be the next Michael Burry and maybe in a few years when the oil crash, maybe even negative numbers again, they'll make a movie about me and maybe I can star or I can have Johnny Depp do it for me since, you know, he did win that case after all. Remember to subscribe, leave a like and as always, Peace.